guys, what is up? It is Mixter28 here, and I am doing a long awaited video. Uh, no, I haven't done a video in a while, but I'm doing one now. Uh, let's get straight into it. I am finally doing Metallica Studio Albums Ranked video. I've been wanting to do this for a while and finally got, got it put together. And let's get started. Uh, up first, at number 10, the worst Metallica album by far is St. Anger from 2003. Um, where do I start with this album? First of all, it was recorded during a um, tumultuous time of Metallica's career, a rough patch of their career. Um, guys are starting to get older. And crabbier, and the band was kind of fighting and arguing. The band was fighting and arguing during this time a lot. Um, this is around the time where Jason Newstead quit the band back um, in 2001. Um, he wanted to expand. He wanted to expand his musical career out and do his own thing, and the band wasn't too happy about that. And um, James went into rehab around this time. Yeah, this is just yeah, it's just a rough period for the band. Um, if you've watched um some kind of monster, the documentary that Metallica made, it'll pretty much explain what was going on and why this album came into being. But all I what I gotta say about this album is it's pretty much garbage. Um it's a bad, bad album. Um one of the things that stands out to me, or the things that stand out on it are there's no guitar solos, which really kind of grinds my gears, and the horrible garbage tin lid drum sound that Lars Ulrich has. It is awful. Really awful. Um, the guitar tone is actually not that bad. I don't mind the guitar tone overall in this album, but overall, but just all the songs sound, most of these songs sound like crap. Um, the lyrics suck. Um, uh, it's just, it's really cringy, especially frantic. That song extremely annoying with the snare drums, and I hate the I don't like the lyrics at all. They're awful. Um, Saint Anger is a somewhat decent song. It's got some solid riffs on it. Um, lyrics are all right. Let's see, Dirty Window, another bad snare drum song. Um, Invisible Kid, the lyrics I don't like at all. Um, and just not a fan of it. My World's a decent song. Uh, it's probably the only one worth going back and checking out. Shoot Me Again, um, pretty annoying as well. Sweet Amber is probably the worst song on the whole album. It's very forgettable. Unnamed Feeling is alright. Let's see, Purify is terrible as well. And yeah, that's about it. This album is... Is it is what it is. Um, could be worse. Could it could it could be a lot better. Definitely, but yeah, it's it's bad. I'm not spending any more time on this one. Let's move on to number nine, and that is Death Magnetic from two thousand eight. Now, some of you or some of you probably disagree with this. Why why you have this so low? It sounds like and justice for all and ah. Uh, Sounds like Injustice for All and Master Puppets and so on and so forth. It does not sound like Master Puppets, first of all. And it copies riffs, recycles riffs straight from Injustice for All. I believe, I don't remember what song it is, but there's one song in here that clearly recycles a riff from Injustice for All. Yeah, that bugs me. Absolutely bugs me. So... Uh, sorry about the pause there. Um, yeah, like I said, I was just thinking. Um, like I said, they riffs are pretty. Re I, like I said, it recycles a riff from Manchester for All. And that kind of bugs me because it's it it was already used on an album. Why use it again on this on a, on a different album? It's just and it sounds overly compressed. That's the whole entire problem with Death Magnetic. It is the production is absolutely atrocious. They. They like took it and put it in a blender and turned up the volume a hundred percent. It's it's terrible. Um, Rick Rick Rubin did an awful job on the production, and that's it. That it pretty much ruins this album for me. 
Oh, none of the songs sound good at all. There's no pop in any of the songs. There's no dynamics. The dynamic range is gone. Um, and a lot of the songs are just kind of like, eh, for me. Especially, um, um, Judas Kiss. Judas Kiss is eh. Unforgiven 3 is completely redundant. I don't know why they had to make another Unforgiven song. Uh, Broken, Beaten, and Scarred is very, very blah as well. Uh, but the positives on this song, Cyanide is really catchy. I, that song you can get in your head. It's definitely one of the best songs on this album. It's got a great chorus. It's got some great riffs on it and solo. It's got a nice, it's got, it's got nice, nice guitar work on it overall. Kirk Hammett does a great job. Um, that was Just Your Life is a strong opening to the album. Uh, Day It Never Comes is a pretty nice song. And All Night Bear Long is good as well. But other than that, very this album is very forgettable. And I um, I wouldn't recommend listening to this a whole lot. It's it's, it's all right. It's all right to listen to it a few times, but it, it gets real old. Well, that is Death Magnetic at number nine. Moving on to number eight, we've got Reload, which is, um, which is the second album. Oh, uh, which is uh, what am I saying? This album was supposed to be a part of a double album, uh, with another album before it. So. It's a bunch of leftover songs. Um, best song in here, definitely the opening track, Fuel. It's a great live track. Um, that Love the intro lyrics and the guitar playing on this, drumming. Overall, it's just a really hype song. Memory Remains is okay. That song is, I've liked it less and less the more I've heard it. Um, not a fan, just, yeah, I don't know what it is about that one. Devil's Dance is nice and, or Devil's Dance is a very, um, how would I describe it? It's a very like I don't know how to describe. It. Devil's Dance is a cool song. I'm just gonna say that. Unforgiven Two is an eh. It's all right. Uh, Better Than You is very repetitive. Um, it's not. It's kind. It's, it's not great. Slither, completely forgettable song. Filler. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of other filler songs on here. I really like Low Man's lyric. That's a nice song it's very different and creative they did they did a nice job with um they did a nice job writing this song i thought and uh fixer is also a decent song in here i think it's all right but overall this album is it's all right it's not 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 terrible it's not nothing great somewhere in the middle i think um for a for the set for a second half of another um for the second half of a left from leftovers from a what was going to be a double album it's, Probably, probably the worst of the two, uh, lesser of the two. But there's, there's definitely some songs worth checking out on here, and it does run a little long. That's my, that's that is a gripe I have with this one. But they could take, they could take some songs out of this album and the one we're going to talk about next, and it would be better, I think. And the next album we're going to talk about is Load. This was supposed to be combined. This album was supposed to be combined with Reload to create a double album, but. Uh, they decided to split the two up, as you can see. And this 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 album here has much stronger songs on it. I I like actually quite like this one. Um some of the highlights on here. Until It Sleeps is a great hit single. King Nothing, great song. Hero of the Day. I lo love it. That song is really nice. Uh Bleeding Me is a very um emotional song. Let's see. Mama says is a country-ish song, which is a little weird for Metallica, but it's nicely written. And the hidden gem on here is Outlaw Torn. It is a fantastically written song. It's got a lot of ebbs and flows, and it tells a great story. Um, I love that song. That song is probably one of the best Metallica songs of the 90s, for sure. It definitely is. One of their best songs they've ever written. But yeah, there's some really strong songs in here. There's a lot of filler, too. Um, I'm not really going to talk about the filler, but it's really nice. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Until It Sleeps. That song is actually written about, J uh, one of, I think it was written about James's, someone in J James Hetfield's family. Um, so it's a very, that's another, it's a pretty heartfelt song. I said, uh, Bleeding Me was heartfelt. But yeah, that's, um, Until It Sleeps actually is the one that's pretty heartfelt on this one. So... Yeah, even though this album was crit or around this time, Metallica was pretty criticized for like cutting their hair and going soft and stuff, but 
No, man, you don't. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about the music. And this album, musically, is very nice. Some good stuff. Uh, right, but I do have with this album is the cover. Um, it's like semen and blood. It's really, it's really kind of stupid. Um, I like the reload cover a lot better with sand, the sand dunes. Um, yeah, it's just one gripe I have with this, and that there's a lot of filler and it runs long, just like reload. But other than that, I think this is a pretty good album. Right, number six is their newest album from 2016, Hardwired to Self Destruct. Now, this album, it's a very good album. I like the guitar sound on here. It sounds the first song, Hardwired to Self Destruct, has sounds a lot, very much sounds like it's from the new old British heavy metal. But it's repetitive. It's it's but it's very repetitive with the with a horrible chorus. I, um, uh, it's, it it sounds rushed, which it was. Um, I don't think they should. I think they should have took their time with the with Hardwired. Um, Atlas Rise is a very good song. I like that one, it's probably one of the better songs on here. Moth into the Flame is pretty good. Um, I think my favorite song on here is Halo on Fire. Uh, I love the. Love the solos and or love the riffs on here. Well, yeah, especially the riffs on Halo and Fire are awesome, and the lyrics are pretty darn good as well. Um, let's see. And the other song that's good on here is "Spit Out the Bone." Really, that is a very very thrashy song and got a really cool music video as well. Actually, the Taliban did something really crazy and they made music videos for all the songs. Thought that was something really something. Um, uh, something to see. They're worth checking out. But yeah, there's there's some there are some filler songs on here. Um actually Am I Savage is an alright song too. But yeah, overall this is this is a solid album. It's it's not it's not classic Metallica, but it's 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 good. It's a good album. Pretty darn good. So let's move on to uh, we're gonna move on to top five territory and albums you definitely should have should own. Uh, the Black Album. Now, a lot of people think this is wit oh, really, like, this is by far their best album, their number one album, uh, because most people were introduced to the, uh, Metallica with this album, uh, shot into the, this album shot into the mainstream, uh, went number one, it was just crazy, man. Um, uh, this, this is where, this is where Metallica had their most commercial success, for sure. They sold millions of records, millions of the copies, they sold millions of copies of the Black Album, and this is really what upped their popularity. So, because of that factor, they're, they're in the top five, but this, this album to me isn't, it's not number one, but it's not, yeah, it's definitely not number one. There's, they've written better than this. There's, there's, there's some songs I don't care for on here, but I like a majority of this album. Um, Enter Sandman is what introduced me to Metallica. And it holds a special place and um, special place for me because it's the first song I heard by them. One of the first songs I heard. Sad but True has got crunchy, awesome. Or it has cr some crunchy guitar riffs on it and a cool solo and some uh, Lars. I like Lars's drumming on here. Um, Holier Than Thou I think is a gem on here. Really like that song. Unforgiven is one of the, one of their hits on hit radio hits on here. Uh wherever I may roam is pretty repetitive. I don't like through the never. It's just a boring song to me. Not a fan of it. Nothing else matters is an awesome ballad. It's pretty inspirational. Um, let's see. Also think of Wolf of Man of Wolf and Man is a pretty good song as well. And yeah, the the rest of the album's kind of fill kind of. Not pretty much filler to me, but this is this is a great this is a pretty great album. It's awesome, awesome stuff on here, but it gets pretty repetitive. I think at times certain songs and, but the the thing that really stands out about this one is the the crystal clear production by Bob Rock and Metallica. They did a great job producing this album, um, simplifying it and making it uh commercial commercially and radio friendly for the public and. Because of that fact, this is a top five album. All right, we got Kill 'Em All, uh, the very first Metallica studio album. This came out in nineteen eighty three, and um, most of the uh, I think most of uh, most of these songs on here were from the No Life to Leather demo, 
Yeah, so a lot of people knew Metallica was going to be huge after this album because they heard the demo. And then when this album came out, um, they, they kind of knew what to expect. This is he this is some heavy stuff. This is heavy thrash metal music right here. And there isn't really a song that's weak on here, except for maybe Phantom Lord. But I think Phantom Lord is unfairly viewed as a weak point on here. Uh, yeah, I think it probably is the the weak weaker the weakest on here, but it's, they're all good songs. In fact, I think Seek and Destroy is even a little bit oh, a little bit too highly touted. There's, but oh, that that is it is a great song. Uh, Metal Militia is a fantastic song to close the album. Probably one of their better their be better one of their best closers. Hit the lights kicks it off strong here. Uh, the Four Horsemen was the the Four Horsemen was the revised version of Mechanics with uh, different lyrics and yeah, with different lyrics and it slowed down from Mechanics, but it sounds a lot like it. Uh, Motor Breath's a pretty cool song. I always like that one. Jump Into Fire is probably one of my favorites. Um, Anesthesia Pulling Teeth is an awesome bass solo and then Lars comes in with some drumming toward later on in the song. Um, Whiplash is the by far the heaviest song here. It's most people's favorite. Um, probably one of my favorites. No Remorse is probably... I'd have to say No Remorse is my favorite on here. I really like that one. And yeah, this album is just... It, it, it's a blast to listen to. Highly recommend it. It's highly... Uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend this one. Alright, and Justice for All. A lot of people think... People, a lot of people actually put this at number one. It's just because of because the songwriting and the guitar playing and riffs are so great, and Lars's drumming so awesome on here. They boost the drumming up. Um, the only great people have is the lowered volume of the bass, but I don't think that really that only deters a bit from this album because it's still a great album. But it, that doesn't turn me off completely from it. I don't think. Um, starts off with probably. I'd actually have to say Blackened is their best opening track on any album. Um, I'd put this, yeah, I definitely would say that. And Justice for All, really long song, um, so that might turn some people off, but I, I really like And Justice for All. Great lyrics. Um, the lyrics are great on And Justice for All and I Have the Beholder as well. But Conspiracies, um, one is about... Um, somebody losing a le losing a limb in in a war and then getting locked up in a cell and being trapped in the cell. Um, so it's a pretty uh, morbid song, but it's, it is a classic song by Metallica. Short of Straws, all right. Uh, I think a pretty good song as well. Harvester of Sorrow is Lars Ulrich's favorite Metallica song. I I know why. It's got the amazing drumming. Um, Free Hands of Sanity is right up there as one of right up there with one is one of my favorite is as my favorite one of my favorites on this album. It's got amazing, got it's got awesome lyrics and riffs on it. Uh, to live is to die is a nice. It pays homage to Cliff Burton. I think they do a good job of that. And then Dyer's Eve is the definitive Metallica closing songs. Amazing, does a great job closing this album. Oh, and Justice for All, from 1988, is a, is an absolutely sick album. Lyrically and um, dr uh, lyrically and musically, it's pretty sick. The only real weak spot is the the lower bass. I think I think I think it gives more. Um, I think with the lower bass, it gives more emphasis on the guitar playing, the drumming, and it, it just makes it a different kind of album to me than any other. Uh, metal album out there, so I, I like it, and it's got an awesome co cover of the Statue of Liberty, uh, being tied tied up. It's awesome. All right, number two, probably I know this is number two, but this is my favorite Metallica album. It's the first album I listened to all the way through, and it's got it has got classic songs on here. Ride the Lightning, my favorite Metallica song. Oh, love the love the solo love love the solos in this song and the 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 the, pl the, the playing overall. It's awesome. Pretty good lyrics. For whom the bell tolls is a classic. One of the first songs I ever heard. Uh, it's based off the Ernest Hemingway book. Uh, Fight Fire with Fire is probably probably one of the heaviest Metallica songs. Great opener. 
uh, "Fade to Black" is probably my probably one of the best. It's probably the best suicide song out there. <laughs> It's a great song. Trapped Under Ice is about being trapped under ice, the same as the title. Escape, a lot of people criticized it, but it's a good song. It's got, it's, it's written, well written. I mean, the tuning is a little a little weird for, for a Metallica song, but I, I think it's cool. Creeping Death, one of my favorite songs again by Metallica. It's a classic song. They played it live a ton. Awesome. And then you got Call of Cthulhu, which Dave Mustaine has songwriting credits to. Um, as he does on Kill 'Em All as well, he's got songwriting credits on like three or four on like three or four of the songs. Man, it's got it's got awesome spider chords in it. And Cliff, this is at Call of Cthulhu is where Cliff Burton really starts starts to shine for sure. And at number one is Master of Puppets. Now, oh, how could I not choose Master of Puppets? Um, it is a fantastic album. Musically, it's their best album, so I had to pick it, and it's got their best, the definitive Metallica song on it, Master of Puppets. It's got Battery, which I, I, which is, which is right up there with the best, the best of the best openers Metallica's had. I said best twice. It's right up there as one of the best openers they've had. Um, kind of, it kind of is, um, at the beginning, it's acoustic, there's, there's some acoustic guitar in the beginning, and then it gets... It gets louder and louder, and it's pretty. And it sounds like a battery's chugging along. Oh, Disposable Heroes, a song about war. It's probably my favorite on here. Love, love it. It's very thrashy. And Leper Messiah's got, um, not Leper Messiah. Um, Orion is by far the best instrumental they've written. Oh, it's got some fantastic harmonies between. Uh, between uh Kirk Hammett, uh, and James Hetfield, and especially this is this is, this is this is Cliff Burton's song though. Really, I don't know why I'm talking about James and Kirk. This is this is where Cliff really shines. It's his definitive song, and the Damage Inc. is really cool. It's a it's a really heavy closing song. Uh, Welcome Home's a nice ballad. It's a, it's a ballad ish song, I would say. And the thing that should not be is probably the weakest weakest song on here. Just doesn't really fit the vibe of the album, but over but but uh, overall it's a solid song. This is yeah this this is the definitive metal album as I said, it's the first metal album to sell like uh, to go platinum, and it was certified by the Library of Congress. Um, uh, first metal album to be certified by them, so it's pretty sick. So. Yeah, that's going to be it for the studio albums, Metallica studio albums. I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.